See, and then you're like... Oh, no. Uh, just go back here in the backpack. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, I'm gonna try some pictures of my life, and then this is a article, and then I'm including the back here. I think it's recording, I don't know. How do you do stereotyping and prejudice among high school students? Yeah. And that's what the psychology that no, background okay. brings back. And there's, that's not good for me, you know, I've been kind of with me, but okay, then this is for 1990s for my grandma's house. me in Miami. Yeah. And then, so, as my article says, I was the story of Cat Franker. I was a great athlete playing three sports, football, baseball, and hockey. And I loved hockey the most. And my intelligence first month, I was ranked out of a class of 200, 200 students. Grade A report cards came naturally without a struggle. Form was really necessary. Popularity came came easy as well. I, I had tons, I had friends, and a very steady girlfriend. But come January 28th of 2004, my life changed drastically. I was hit by a truck while crossing the highway on a snowmobile. And this little spot right here, that, that was a little bit of blood that occurred in my brain. That caused left side paralysis and I relearned everything. I started, started at, back at the third grade reading level. And I was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury, or TBI, close head injury. Okay, so the conclusion I have for you guys. Uh, don't... Okay, people act on their, on past knowledge. Meaning, people, they, they make judgments of other people, and sometimes those judgments are inaccurate. So don't base what you previously know on someone based on superficial characteristics, like they they got an ailment or they can't move their arm or leg or anything like that. And then, and this leads to stereotyping and prejudiced behaviors on those individuals with something physical or, yeah. And, and what I really want you guys to learn is to examine your past beliefs. Think truly about what you say to people and how that may be interpreted to them no matter what is said, if it's positive or negative. And then, and be open to new people and things. Be open to a, to a person in a wheelchair. Find out why they're in a the wheelchair. And I, I'm almost certain that they won't hold resentment or anger towards you or anything regarding, yeah. And, uh, And just because
superficial characteristics of a handicapped driver's assumption, drives people's assumptions because people, because Americans, um, um, United States model is faster is better. And what I can do better is achieve things by getting things done and basing my assumptions on people. Don't let them, don't let your assumptions drive your behavior. And, yeah. And, uh, so, I think that's pretty close to being it. And I, I attach my, no, my name, number, and email address. If any of you guys have questions or things that you think I could improve on or ideas, please email me or call, it doesn't matter. I'll do whatever you guys need me to do to make you guys more uh, culturated. Yeah, and so is there any questions that could be? Anyone, please ask one. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you tell us a little bit about the struggles of your rehab? Right. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit down while I do this. Okay, the, the struggles in my rehabilitation. I, I was confined to a wheelchair for probably about, for a year for that time. And it was not until when I was, okay, so I was in the hospital for 120, 20 days after the accident. So I was stabilized in Marinette County or Marinette Hospital. And then I was flown by helicopter to uh, Green Bay, St. Vincent, traumatic brain injury, whatever. And so I then was in the ICU on the eighth floor or I spent maybe I think three, three or four weeks or, yeah, and then I was transferred to the second floor, which is the rehabilitation floor where I had to start everything, I had to relearn everything. I started at the third grade reading level and, yeah, and I relearned, I really had to learn how to talk, how to think, how to, how to do the basic thing that you guys, that most people take for granted, so just be grateful for what you do have. And, uh, uh, the original question was my rehabilitation, so going back to that, uh, I, I suffer still from paralysis on the side. I can move it, but I have, have hypertone, which is excess tone, so I can't, I, I, the whole pinch and release pattern in the left hand doesn't really work too well and on the left side, so I can't, that's the whole thing that's still the continuing problem. I don't, yeah, I can't use the left side, but my right side is maybe 80% uh, of their functionally, function, functioning, and then uh, the whole speech therapy was very uh, influential. I had to learn how to talk. I remember just sitting in the rehab services thinking, what am I doing here? I don't know, I don't need to know how to talk. I need, I need to know how to run and be good at sports. It just changes your whole frame of mind when you suffer something so traumatic as a brain injury. You were in front of a coma for six weeks when you were 16. When you thought you had the world by, by, I don't know, we had, you thought you had the world by everything you had the world in your hands. And to come all over that coma and to realize that you don't have anything now because you you had an injury 